And we are back with the former Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. Let me ask you about another uh, relationship of yours during the period you were Prime Minister. Um, it's what Yossi Melman, the Israeli journalist, calls the, the strange love affair between Bibi and Putin. You met with Vladimir Putin, phone conversations. Um, you went to the opera, uh, the, the ballet with him. Um, a lot of people feel that international statesmen coddled Putin rather than uh, creating kind of a tough stand of deterrence that would have made him understand the costs of his kind of actions. In retrospect, what do you think of this friendship? First of all, I wouldn't call it a love affair, but I would call it uh, uh, a question of interest. Uh, national leaders have a responsibility for the security of their country. The Russian and Israeli air forces are literally flying next to each other over the skies of Syria. I was committed to preventing Iran from creating another uh, Lebanon front in Syria. So we took hundreds and hundreds of air sorties against their, uh, their attempts to implant themselves militarily in Syria. That got us into a potential uh, clash with uh, the Russian Air Force that is also flying over the skies of Syria. So I made it a point to, and they almost did, by the way. The, I also write that in my book. We nearly clashed several times. And starting a war between Russia and Israel I didn't think was a good idea. So I made every effort to coordinate with, uh, the, the, uh, with Putin and the Russian military the, uh, uh, the sorties so we wouldn't bump into each other. And we achieved that goal. And that, I think, is a, a matter of national interest. As far as Russia is concerned, I think you have to be... Look, I think the Ukrainian thing could spiral out of control. I, I think it's tragic. The wanton bombing of civilians is horrible. Uh, but I think you now face another issue, and that is that it could spire a lot of control to what they call a tactical, the use of tactical nuclear weapons. I, I don't think materially it matters if it's tactical or strategic. Uh, the world has not crossed that threshold for 77 years, and I think it requires very firm and prudent stewardship to prevent that from happening, because as horrible as the tragedies are today in Ukraine, you could face a much bigger tragedy if this uh, is not prevented. I was in Kyiv about a month ago, and I talked to President Zelensky and uh, pretty much all the senior officials there. And one uh, theme that came through very clearly was their disappointment with Israel. They felt that uh, Israel had not really supported them as they would have liked in, in word, in deed. They've asked for Israel has this amazing Iron, Iron Dome defense. They, they, they asked for some help there. Uh, and they feel that Israel has maintained a kind of, uh, uh, you know, a kind of has been fudging, is not willing to really support them in what is their life and death struggle. And, you know, to, a president, for President Zelensky, who is, um, you know, of Jewish descent, I think it was particularly painful. Well, I, I think Israel has supported Ukraine, first of all, in humanitarian terms. It's taken into a tiny country. Israel is a small country. It's taken an inordinate amount of Jewish and non-Jewish uh, Ukrainian refugees, number one. Number two, we've sent field hospitals and other humanitarian supplies. Uh, but number three, uh, I don't argue with you. This is the decision of the current Israeli government. If I get into power, I'll look into this question. Uh, I think it's a, it's a very delicate question, given the, question, the, the issues that I raised, but I think it's a, it's a valid one. If I get elected, I'll look into it. Bibi Netanyahu, pleasure to have you on. Thank you, Farid.